good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Leanne Motley, and I work as lecturer and in, at the University of Johannesburg. I'm also the international lead for Young Water Professional South African Chapter and part of the EWL Career Building Troop. But I'm sure most of you know that by now. So the reason why we are here today, we would just firstly like to welcome our new listeners and then our returning listeners. Thank you once again for joining us. We have an exciting lineup today and I cannot wait to get into it. So today we have the honor of speaking to Farouk Lakar all the way from Ryerson University in Canada. Farouk is a professor and a PhD candidate and her research focuses on resource recovery from wastewater and she is also passionate about contributing to the SDGs. She's also the president of the YWP Canadian chapter and she has over 2000 followers on LinkedIn. Yeah, I know, my jaw drop as well. I'm sure you are as excited as I am to learn more about this young, passionate and ambitious professional. Farouk, welcome and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us today. Hello. Hello, Leanne. Hi. <laughs> so you are currently working in academia. Is this by choice? Hello, everyone. And thank you, Leanne, for the great introduction and the question. And I should say, yes, it is by choice. It's it's very interesting how it started. I, I really wanted to briefly share this um, story with you that how I was a little teenager and I was reading this series of books about teachers who were teaching in high school and how all the struggles and problems that they were solving and, and dealing with the kids. And it just inspired me so much to be a teacher at that time. And then when I got the opportunity to go to school, guess what? It was not my choice to be an engineer. It was my choice to be a teacher, go to teaching school. But then I, I, I went to engineering school because I, I selected it in part because I love math as well. <clears throat> and then I wanted to transfer. I went to my dean and I was like, can I please transfer to teaching? And I was like, why? <laughs> and, and then I was like, because I love to teach. And then he was like, you can still teach. Don't worry. Just go to your class. <laughs> and I took that. And, and I don't regret that uh, decision. Because wow. right now, even though I did engineering, still I could pursue my dream of being a teacher and a professor. Wow. That's such an interesting story. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing with us. So do you see yourself in academia for the next five years? Um, if not, why not? And if so, why? That's a great question. And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> I know it's funny when you have both because I do see myself in academy because I love to teach and I feel like I wouldn't be able to survive without being in, in a class and interacting with students and doing research, of course. So I will be for sure in academia for the rest of my life. But on this side, I felt like I could do much more and add a little bit spice in my life. And I am that kind of person that I, I, I think I get sick when I don't have so much on my plate. <laughs> I, I need to have that dynamic life and up and down and pressure. Yes, so yes. I, I want to also take some entrepreneurship pathway as I did before in my back home. I was entrepreneur and a professor. So similarly yes. now when I'm in Canada, a new life, a new path. So I do want to have my own business inside of the academy. Wow, that's so interesting. So what kind of business, if I may ask? Absolutely. Although it's a secret, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to reveal it. So it's going to be, again, academic. That's interesting. So my business will be about having a career college in future. Soon you will wow. hear about <laughs> wow. Oh, sounds so interesting. I can't wait to hear all about it soon, soon when it's out there. <laughs> so do you think um, there's anything rewarding about being a civil engineer in academia? Absolutely. I, I can tell that for, for anyone who would like to pursue this path, that it's really rewarding how you can contribute to the worldwide challenges and, and see that how, how, 
how all these, for example, climate change, the, the big challenges that people are struggling uh, outside. And as a civil engineer in academy, you have the opportunity to contribute by your research, by your small talks in the class that you can talk about people's daily routine even, that how you wake up in the morning and you go to toilet, flush the toilet, which button to use, right? How you can, um, when you're brushing your teeth, right? This is little things. If you, as a professor, you talk in your class, you're making an impact, right? Yeah. So yeah. as a civil engineer, I believe in academia, you can also make an impact. And also, not only that, supervising great leaders and impact makers in the future. Isn't it rewarding when you see the future that one of your students became um, someone who is advocate and, and is shining out there. And he's like, that was my student. <laughs> Isn't that rewarding? I definitely agree with that one. It's truly rewarding. And I can truly relate to that as well. But do you think there's any difficult issues, you know, with being um, a civil engineer in academia? Of course, there is always for human being anywhere you go, there are challenges. And, and but the good thing is that there are always solutions for it. But you just you need to know how to deal with it. And I believe for civil engineers in academia, the the main limitation is the the, the facilities that they have. I believe that in academia, civil engineers have less facilitation and less facilities or research um, equipments and things to contribute to all these great things that are out there. Versus if you compare with the industries, they have more money, of course, and, mm -hmm. and more contribution and, and they're more visible because for the academia, you don't have that luxury to mm -hmm. do all those uh, pilot or or big skill um, in the researches, right? So I would say this this is sort of a challenge, and also the the culture and perspective of and the audience, the students, the people, and even the industry towards academy is it's a little bit biased and different. Mm -hmm. um, for example, there is this bias that they think in academy people just publish and to graduate students, right? Or it's a very small work, right? Which, yeah. which is not fair in, in some contexts, right? <laughs> I feel it should be a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with the little facilities that we're getting, what, how much more we can do, right? <laughs> so I believe there are yeah. challenges. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you. Thank you so much for highlighting those. I think um, we have the same challenges. And one of the main things always would be the, the budget, you know, we constantly applying for funding and not always getting the funding, but still being expected to do your job as if you got the funding. So um, I totally, totally <laughs> agree with you there. <laughs> if you had to give someone advice who'd like to follow the same path, um, what would be your advice? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that, because I wish I would hear something like this when I started my career. Because it's so interesting how our young generation goes uh, towards what they Google or what they hear from people or, or they, they search and they say, oh, this salary has a great job and I should go there. Or believe it. Some people come and ask me that, uh, miss, what do you think, uh, which job has the highest salary? Yes. Which discipline should I go? And then I'm like, no. It's, this is not the question you should ask. Mm -hmm. You should ask that, what do I like? You should ask yourself a question first, okay? So then that's where you will enjoy your work and whatever you do in the future. So if anyone wants to follow the same path as I did, I would like to tell them that listen to your heart and see, yeah. do you like it? Do you like to be in the class? Do you like to interact with the people? If you do, then for sure, follow the same path. But if you don't, find what you want. That is so inspirational. So, so inspirational. Thank you so much for sharing. I think um, we now need to start paying more attention to our emotional and mental health and realizing that money is not everything because you might have all that money, but if you're unhappy and you're unhealthy, it's totally worth nothing. So thank you so much. That's a very inspiring 
um, piece of advice. Thank you. <laughs> Can you give us two fun facts about yourself? Oh, for sure. Um, one fun fact is that <laughs> my family told me that you can be a great stand-up comedian. <laughs> Believe it or not, I, I sometimes when we have a gathering, I did. I, 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 I went there and I said beautiful jokes and made everyone laugh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think that uh, adds up to my teaching as well. When I probably when I'm teaching, I, I go there and I, I put some jokes inside the lecture and it makes it more interesting. Probably. Yes. So that's a fun fact about me. <laughs> And also one more thing that I love dancing. <laughs> wow. Had we known, we should have said, please prepare a 10 second uh, dance for us. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And I love to dance in different, um, different songs from different cultures, different uh, oh. languages. So yeah, it's, it's one of my hobbies as well. Oh, wow. That's such an interesting fact. Now I know what to ask you next time. are there any two secret powerful daily habits which you can share with us the first thing is uh, keeping connected i sometimes when i work with my group of volunteers i tell them that um i'm exaggerating that the first thing i do in the morning before feeding my kids is to check my linkedin (laughs) so be there and be visible this yeah, is something yeah. I, it's a piece of advice as well. That's my routine as well. Although I'm super busy with, with balancing life with the kids and all the other things I have on plate, but you got to be out there. And that's my routine to, to be there and to make sure that I'm connected with my friends in professional life as well. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that keeping healthy, because if you're not healthy, if you're not taking care of yourself, then you can't function dancing every day again (laughs) (laughs) those are amazing two tips i can see how we can put that into our lives as well thank you so much what else do the iwa peers not know about you so besides the dancing can you give us two more things that we don't know about you Hmm. okay um I do want to learn salsa. If anyone knows, please, <laughs> can you teach me? Because <laughs> I do know how to dance individually, but I don't know how to <laughs> do salsa. So please, if anyone there can hear me, please reach out to me. I really want to learn, <laughs> even if it's virtual. <laughs> I think it will be virtual for now. Oh, yes, for sure. And the other things, I, I don't want to ruin my image, but I'm a terrible cook. <laughs> When, when sometimes I cook at home and, and my kids see it and they, they're like, um, did mommy cook? Because it's so terrible, they can tell. <laughs> did mommy cook today? Oh, gosh. And kids have no filter. So they'll always give you, you know, things that you sometimes don't want to hear, but have to hear. So <laughs> exactly. that's, that's, that's right. That's true. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us. And then obviously... I was so impressed by over 2,000 followers on LinkedIn. I was like, wow, okay, I don't even have one. How do you even get followers? Um, So I want to know more about branding yourself. Do you have anything to share, you know, any tips that some of us like me can use? (laughs) I think I already gave one tip before that that checking frequently and and just being active because it's all about algorithms, right? And uh, um. So that, that was one thing, right? And the other thing was just uh, for the LinkedIn in particular, when you are participating to the events, online event, just don't go without having at least one or two connections, right? Making yes. sure that when you're participating to the online events, at least you connect to two, three people on the chat box, getting their LinkedIn, or yeah. if they are sharing, most of the events nowadays, they share LinkedIn's uh, profile at the end of the event. Mm-hmm. Make sure to take your time to do that because eventually by the time that comes out and, and then you you make all these followers. And by the way, Leanne, good job with the, checking the numbers. I haven't checked the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Farouk. Thank you for sharing your professional 
life, some insights into your personal life. And I'm sure everyone enjoyed this as much as I did. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your efforts. And we look forward to chatting to you soon. Thank you so much, Leanne. It was absolutely...